Good morning, class, and welcome to our interview for this week. Uh, today we're here with Mrs. Christine Allen. Uh, she has a lot of different jobs that she's in charge of here at Lancaster Baptist. Uh, some of the primary ones are she's in charge of the nursery and the preschool, um, and then also really works with the kids' city, the kids' department, people checking in. And so we have a lot to learn from her about what do families do when you have an event at your church? How do you care for the children and the youth during that event? So if you'd like to, Mrs. Allen, continue by maybe elaborating on that introduction and then explaining what your ministry is here at Lancaster Baptist. So my ministry started off as just nursery director, but a lot of times in ministry, uh, your position can change. So I've also, like you said, done the preschool. Um, I'm the Kid City Secretary, so I do all the behind the scenes work for our ministry, as well as um, in the last few years, I've been given funerals to coordinate as well, so. Okay, so um, with the Kid City work, with how that ties into events, um, what do you do in preparation for an event um, to be ready for families coming? And what does that look like? Um, how do you help families uh, in an event? Okay, so our next big event that's going to come up will be Easter, which is a few months out, but we actually do start kind of planning it months ahead. Uh, we like to give them a special gift uh, for the children. So when a, when a, when a first-time guest family comes, they're brought to us either by an usher, uh, by a church member, um, right at our counter that we're at. And we have greeters besides just myself that are there as well that are trained also to help a first-time family so that when we do have a lot of families, there's several of us that can help with that. Uh, so uh, just in, for instance, last year we had 166 first-time guest families come through um, throughout the year. And that's just first-time guest families, and that's not doesn't uh, include other families as well. Uh, but when we're going to get ready for an event such as Easter, uh, we need to make sure that we have enough um, bags. We give out Kid City bags to every child. So we always want to order those months ahead and plan for that. We try to plan for anywhere from, we'll have anywhere from 75 to 100 families, usually on a, on a big day like that. So we want to have plenty of bags, plenty of gifts. Uh, we have information that we give the parents. So there's a Kid City pamphlet that we want to give them. Uh, we have location cards to help the parents so that they know where their kids go. And so we want to have those ready and available. Um, we'll have extra, when it's a big event, extra tables for the children to, uh, and their parents to be able to go to register them. And so we want to be prepared for that. So there's a lot of prep work. Uh, so we definitely, I have a to-do list that I go by. <laughs> I'm, sure. um, I'm a big list person, and so I think that's important. And so you don't miss any of those important factors because your, your uh, front line is your bottom line. And so you get one opportunity to make a first impression. There's no second chances. And so it's very important that we're ready for these big events. Okay. Now, with uh, families coming in, maybe with uh, babies or really young children, specifically pertaining maybe to the nursery side, um, how do you help guide the parents into trusting you uh, to take their kids in the nursery? And what do we do to make sure that our nursery is at a trustworthy level? One, we want to make sure we have plenty of workers. So especially when it's a big event, we know we're going to get a lot of first-time guests. We want to make sure we're we're overstaffed, and so it looks like there's you know plenty of people in there. We want to try to help the parents feel at ease as much as possible. So uh, our workers they get training twice a year on you know what to do when you have, for instance, a two-year-old nursery. A lot of times we'll have one that's um, not happy about being there because the parent does drop them off, but they're on the floor and they're kicking and they're screaming. And so our workers are even trained to try to take that child like away from the front where another first-time guest family may be trying to drop off mm -hmm. to help ease them as well. So we, on our sign-in sheets, have a place for them to put their phone number. And so we, as a greeter, as we're taking them, we can, you can usually sense if a parent is not like excited to put their child in and they're kind of questioning if they want to or not. And so we'll, we'll try to talk to them about it, you know, like, uh, well, a lot of times they might cry for a few minutes, but if you don't want them to cry past, you know, 10 minutes, the worker will text you all you have to do is put your number right here you know and then I also just we as a greeters will reassure them that um, we'll come back and 
will check on the child for them and text them. Because okay. they, when they've registered with us, they've given us their information. They've put their number on the sign-in sheet. So as a greeter, we'll reassure them that if they want to go ahead and try to leave them, that we'll come check on them again in 10 minutes. And then if they're still crying, we'll text them and we'll let them know. And most of the time, they'll go ahead and leave them. And we stick to that. Even though we don't know if they're saved or not, and we want them to stay, we also want them to trust us and come back. And so if it's been 10 minutes and their child has not calmed down, we will text them and say, they haven't calmed down, so if you want to come, you know, go ahead and come. And so we'll set an alarm on our phone to make sure that we do do it after that 10 minutes so that, okay. they, that they have trust in us. Okay. You, you mentioned a, a check-in. What is the mm -hmm. check-in, check-out process with kids there? So we have a uh, check-in system. And so their first time guest, uh, theirs is a little different the first time. We've tried to uh, mimic it as close to what they will do in the future. And we kind of go over it with them so that they'll know the next time they come. Um, so when they first register with us, they actually, all their kids will get a lime green sticker with their name on it and a code. And then that lets any worker or teacher know this is a first time guest. This oh, is okay. this child, it's their first time. And so they're going to make extra effort to make that child really happy about being there and want to come back and make sure that they're having fun. And so that also that helps our workers to know, okay, this child's crying, we need to help them, or, you know, this child doesn't look like they're having fun, so let's make sure we... Of course, we want all of our children to be happy, but right. the, that lime green sticker helps the worker or teacher know that they're a first time. And then uh, for all of our regulars, the ones after their first time when they come back, we have a check-in system where they put their 10-digit phone number in to a kiosk, it's an iPad at every classroom, and they'll check their child in that way and get another sticker. It's just white that next time, uh, but it will have a special code every time, and they'll get a checkout slip as well with the same code, and our workers match those codes to make sure they're right. So it's a security, and we go through that with the parents of the first-time family so that they know that we're a secure place that they can leave their child. Only so, the person with that code with can that get their With that code children. and that sticker can get their child. So. Okay, okay. Um, how do you go about um, making sure that your nursery workers are qualified and trained? Maybe what prerequisites would you have? If someone comes to you and says, hey, I love kids, I'd like to work in your nursery, what are some questions you're gonna ask them to kind of screen them to see if they're qualified workers for your nursery program? If we have somebody that comes to the counter, and sometimes we'll have somebody that's their very first time, and then they come to the counter and they're all excited and they wanna serve, which is great. But we do have a lot of prerequisites to serving because uh, our, our main goal is to protect the children. We want them to have fun, but we also want them to be well protected while they're under our care. So uh, the first thing is you have to be a member of the church. And then the second thing is you have to be a member for six months. We also want new people to do our discipleship program first so that they get a real understanding of what our church actually is all about and what we believe. Um, then once they've, all of those things are accomplished, um, they actually, their name is given to our leadership team. And so that's all our pastoral staff mm -hmm. and uh, leaders and they're voted on basically by all those. So if somebody in that leadership team may know something that I don't know about the person, even if they're a member and all the other stuff, there may be something that I don't know that they know. And um, they'll say, if they say yes, if we get the yes back from that, from the leadership team, then um, I will then set up an interview. And I always, when they come and they say they wanna serve, I let them know that there's a process to it, you know, that their name is given to the leadership team that I'll be in contact with them within two to three weeks and then let them know, you know, if it's been approved or not. And sometimes it's just, you know, you need to go through the discipleship program first or, you know, you need to be here a little longer or, you know, whatever it is. Um, but if they are approved, then they will meet with me. We'll, have, we'll set up an interview. Uh, we go over the children's policies and procedures with them. We have a policies and procedures handbook. And so we'll go over just some key things. It's kind of thick. <laughs> over the years, it's gotten thicker. Um, so we let them read all of it on their own, but they do bring a paper back signed that says they've read the entire Policies and Procedures Handbook and that they agree with all of it. The second thing that we do do with them is a background check. Okay. So we give them a little card that has the link on it, and then they fill out a questionnaire, and they go to, it's called Protect My Ministry. That's where, uh, the company that we go with, and they fill out a background check. Within two to three days, we're alerted, you know, either way, like, it's a green check or red X. And so the only thing we're looking for is if they've ever harmed a child. So And that would be the red X. That would be the red X. Okay. Okay. 
So with bringing new workers in, how do you balance uh, workers? And I know you mentioned discipleship. How do you balance workers being in the nursery and still getting fed from the Word of God, still hearing preaching? How do you balance those? Right. So they can only serve one service a week. One so, service a week. Um, and what's nice is if they're a Sunday morning, then they have a second of service that they can attend because we have two services. Um, but they only serve one. So if they're going to serve Wednesday night, they go to church Sunday morning and Sunday night. If they're going to serve, because that's another thing that we, when we're talking with them and interviewing them, we tell them the three to thrive, you know, that you need to be faithful to all church services, you know, tithing and all these other things. So those are things that we go over with them. So they're already aware that they're not just serving in one service and that's the only thing they're doing that they are expected to also attend all other services, so. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about kind of the nuts and bolts of how the, that nursery program works. What role uh, does the nursery, does the uh, Kid City, does the preschool play in uh, evangelism at, West, at Lancaster Baptist Church? Um, kind of what's the philosophy behind why we have the nursery and what role it plays? Well, well for one, for one if you can imagine pastor trying to preach when there's babies and two-year-olds <laughs> and three-year-olds and all these other kids in the service with him, pretty much no one's really going to hear the message. I know during COVID when we had online, you know, all we had was online. I was being texted by lots of parents saying, you know, well, I appreciate the nursery a lot more because we're really not getting much out of these services. And so um, that's just one key to that. But the other key is that as a, as a parent myself even, I know um, how important it is for my child to enjoy where I'm taking them. And so for any family, if their child is not having fun at church, if it's more of a, you know, I don't like this or, you know, I, I, the teacher is scary or, or any of that, uh, the family's not going to come. Right. So they're just, they're going to stay home or they're going to find another church or, you know, something like that. And so it is very important for evangelization to make sure that that kids are happy as well because if you know they do say if mom ain't happy nobody's happy but if kids aren't happy the parents aren't happy so okay I know uh, a completely different area that you're also in charge of that we were talking about a couple minutes ago is that you're actually the kind of coordinator for the funerals here and you mentioned that um, that actually has a very evangelistic role in some ways could you tell us a little bit about that well, one of the things with COVID was, of course, everything had to be outdoors if you were going to do anything, and mm -hmm. funerals themselves were outdoors for a while. And then we started having funerals indoors, but there were still, most churches were not having funerals at all. And so we were given an opportunity from the community. We were getting a lot of phone calls when somebody would pass away um, asking if they could come here. And of course, one of our um, prerequisites for that that we would say is it has to be one of our pastors that officiates so okay. um, they're going to give the gospel message okay. so we're not going to let somebody else do that and so because they had nowhere else to go they would agree and so amazingly enough we just we had a lot of unsaved people that were on our campus that probably never would have stepped foot on our campus in any other way um, but we're here because of a funeral of, of a loved one passing away, and we were able to have you know some of our leadership team and stuff be in those services to kind of help with counseling, and so it was a great opportunity for that. Yeah, amazing. So as we're um, kind of wrapping up the interview a little bit, um, are there is there an area or some guiding principles that you'd like to share with this class um, that you feel would be important for them to know to have in their pocket and be aware of going forward? As far as like for special events and things? For special events pertaining to either the nursery, and, okay. either the kids' city, or even the funeral if you desire. One, bathe everything in prayer. Amen. Obviously, prayer is the most important thing. You can have your to-do list and you can have everything set, but if you haven't had time in prayer beforehand, it's not going to go as you think it's going to go. So um, prayer is the most important thing, but also a to-do list is extremely important. So... Um, I, I know Pastor Chapel is very big on to-do lists as well, but um, it is important to, to have something that tells you like what it is that you need to plan for. And of course, your first time doing an event, you really don't know, you know all of it. Take notes, take lots of notes so that you're ready for the next year so that you can improve it. And there can always be improvement in every event. So even if you've done it, like I've been here for eight years in the ministry part of things, and um, 
still, I know that things can be done better every year and always being ready to improve things and find ways to improve things and to make it fresh and new for families. So, Yeah. One other question that I know you mentioned this before the interview and I forgot to bring it up. <laughs> you talked about uh, follow-up specifically for um, those families mm -hmm. uh, that are coming with youth. Can you kind of explain um, what that looks like and why we have special follow-up for families with young children? Well, for one, we want to make sure that those families feel loved, that they feel like they matter to being here. And so, um, of course, the adult side of things is going to look different. They're going to be more on the adults, and so they'll have a connection group leader that's, that's um, coming and visiting the, fam the parents and things like that. Uh, when we have a family with, you know, with kids and then they come to us, um, I make an Excel spreadsheet. I give that to the adult ministries in case they missed, like, some parents that didn't maybe uh, fill out a connection card or something. So they can also visit those parents. We want to visit the kids mm -hmm. because we know how important it is for the kids to feel loved and feel special. And feel important. And yeah. feel important. And so kind of ours is not necessarily... Um, salvation, although if we get that opportunity, we're definitely going to take it. But we want those parents to know that their children are just as important as them. And so we usually wait two weeks before we're going to visit the kids, but we just make a visit to the kids. And we bring them lots of gifts. You know, they get gifts the first time they come, but then we, when we do that follow-up visit, we're going to bring them some other stuff, from fruit snacks and lollipops and little trinkets and, you know, things like that. Uh, we give the parents a pamphlet that says, you know, it's a what we believe, and so they can kind of get to know the church even more. Um, we give them some kid, more Kid City stuff. Um, and then we, we also follow up with them like every quarter to see if they've actually attended a connection group so that we can, you know, let, let the adult ministries know, hey, you know, here's some families that did come, but out of all those families this last four months, only these are, you know, here's some families that haven't, you know, come mm -hmm. back. We try to reconnect with some of the families throughout the year. Uh, we want to try to keep them coming. And so if there's a special event, we'll reinvite them as well for those. So, yeah, I think that's amazing. I think mm -hmm. often, uh, you know, we have our, we have our adult follow up, but we never, we never even put a thought to mm -hmm. following up with those youth unless it's a bus ministry. And even those kids who aren't coming in on our buses could use a follow-up and can use that encouragement. So that's, mm -hmm. uh, I love that idea. And I hope you guys keep that in your pocket as you move forward in the ministry in the coming years. Keep that in mind. That that's an area that most churches could really use some development in. Well, Mrs. Ellen, I thank you for your time. The class appreciates it. Um, and thank you for your wisdom you shared with us. Class, I hope you have an amazing rest of your week. God bless.